I've always wondered how films were processed and how they were colored because when I saw the world around me, I rarely saw the elaborate color schemes you see in films that enhance the experience while watching. And when I watch a movie, I usually go in with the intent to experience an experience outside of the real world to get to know the characters, follow their development, join them on their journey. And then if the film was good, Googled whether there's a sequel coming out. But creating photography and video ruined that for me. When I got my first camera, I started paying attention to color tones and light tones and and then I started looking at videos and then looking at the real world and I wanted to see if it matched up. I then moved on to observing light and how it either enhanced or dehanced colors based on the temperature of the light, the times of day and how light is diffused through things and how it looks when it is bounced and how colors are affected when a sun shifts or it's a certain time of year and colors may look either more pastel or more saturated. And through my observations, I started to notice that photos and videos are gravitate to or what you see in movies or shows undergoes a heavy editing process to create the elaborate visuals as they emulate the world around us in a hypnotic and surreal manner. Now, over the past year, I've been applying what I've been learning from my observations and videos and photos that I create, the ones I share here on this channel and the ones I don't. But with all of that aside, but with learning and applying, there is a curve, a learning curve. And when it comes to color management and color grading my learning curve has been pretty steep but i feel like i'm finally getting a handle on it. my main goal is to get as close to what you see in movies and shows without having to use as much of the gear they use on full sets because of all the cost and money that comes along with it and with that reality looming three weeks ago i was right there about to hang up my camera and take a desk job but then the team from dehancer reached out asked me to review dehancer sent me a link for a free trial now the first time i used dehancer i had to stop editing the video i was working on and give myself some time to process the power and capability of Dehancer because it is ridiculously awesome in my opinion. I mean, I don't really know what else to say besides if you are a solo videographer and you do your own grading and coloring or if you are a colorist and maybe even a solo filmmaker or a documentary filmmaker, whatever the case may be, and you are looking for a way to enhance your footage, then Dehancer is a good place to start and end. Also, if you're a photographer and you are looking for a way to enhance your photos to stand out from the comps, then here you go. Dehancer is a great place to start. Although the name is Dehancer, it will enhance how you grade your footage. It will give you the edge you're looking for when creating or crafting a look for your photos and videos. It is so good that it feels like it's cheating. When I, when I use it, I feel like I'm cheating on the process of color management and color grading. It kind of just gave me a leg up as to where I was struggling when it comes to color management and color grading. I think it feels that way because Dehancer is a professional film emulation software that allows you to simulate the look and feel of film stock with the digital footage and overly sharpened photos we create with the digital cameras we use today. These cameras are very clinical when it comes to the videos they produce. They've gotten so clean and sharp that we're finding ways to soften an image and add imperfections just to show character and individuality with what we create. We do that through cinema lenses, vintage lenses, adding film grain, using filters just for a little spice. We use video editing softwares that come with features to reduce digital sharpness and add grain, starting with the programs that we already use. And when that isn't enough, then we look for plugins like Dehancer, which has been optimized for Final Cut Pro Adobe Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve when it comes to video. It has been optimized for Lightroom, Photoshop, Capture One, and Affinity Photo when it comes to photography. And for mobile creators, it has been optimized for iPhone and iPad. Now for the past few years, the film look has been the go-to look we've gotten as far as shooting with retrofitted cameras like the Fujifilm X100F film cameras and throwaways just to simulate the vintage style and feel and look that we want to create with what we create. But with this one plugin and mobile app, you don't have to try as hard. You don't even have to look far because Dehancer has a wide range of film stock and camera profiles that allows you to emulate a wide range of film looks from vintage to modern to go on top of the simulated feels of nostalgia. Even if you have some other LUTs or a way that you grade your footage, Dehancer has a way of enhancing what you are already reusing. It has a ton of tools for fine tuning, exposure, color balance, and grain to assist you in achieving the film look and enhancing the look and feel of your photos and footage. You can run through all of the film stock and use them on your footage in real time. Although playback struggles, it is possible if you render the files as you go. The user interface is easy to navigate for all skill levels. I would consider myself a beginner when it comes to grading and coloring. And my first use of Dehancer was a walk through the park, figuring out what sliders did what, how much was too much, 
and navigating the interface in general was super intuitive. When you download the Enhancer, you gain access to tutorials to help you get started. But there are a ton of reviews and tutorials out there where you can walk through all of the features. The tutorials range from surface color grading to in-depth instructions on how the Enhancer affects your footage. To be honest, I downloaded the Enhancer and dove right in because it is self-explanatory, but I would highly recommend reading the user manual to get a full understanding of what you were using. Then watch a few tutorials and then go back to the manual and read it all over again and keep it open as you were using it. Get to know the software, play around with the different features as you were learning them. There's no way you can go wrong with it if you get to know it and understand it. With that said, I eventually ran through the user manual and I refer back to it when I need to. The good thing is that I was working on about five videos around the time Dehancer sent out the free trial, so I got a good amount of user time with Dehancer to learn what I needed in a short amount of time. Dehancer is available for download on Windows, Mac OS, iPad OS, and iOS. Use promo code DON10 to get 10% off. And even though Dehancer is a great program, there are some drawbacks. One potential drawback of Dehancer is the cost coming in at $399, but it is worth the price tag in my opinion for what it does, how easy it is to use, and what you can produce from it. It is available for a free trial do check it out before you commit because 399 is a steep price gauge whether you want to make the investment and whether a plugin like Dehancer aligns with your goals as a filmmaker photographer and creator the second drawback I've found so far is that it is too powerful for my first gen m1 macbook I'm heavily considering going back to shooting h.264 because it increases my editing time with how often I have to render the clips in order for them to play back smoothly even though I have the quality set to better performance in Final Cut Pro. The only way I can get the project to export fast is if I render the entire project and then export for a 5 minute video. My export time is about 20 to 30 minutes which is about 10 to 15 minutes longer than if I were to not use Dehancer. The last drawback I've come across so far is that I wish the indicators for the different sections were bigger and bolder but that's just a nitpick but for those who are serious about film emulation especially color management and grading then the investment may be worth it in my opinion for what it does and how well it does it it is well worth it i'd hold off on getting that lens or new camera body download the free trial using the affiliate link in the description and test out dehancer however i am an advocate of using what you have go out and capture the world improve your color management and grading skills and then test out dehancer but if you do use dehancer let me know your experience down in the comments. It is only fair to mention that there are various ways you can get the same results as what you can get out of Dehancer elsewhere. But for me and my experience, Dehancer came at the right time because it is saving me a ton of time with creating all of the tools I use to try to get the looks I'm trying to get from scratch. This is my review of Dehancer, but do keep a lookout for more content on this plugin because it is just that good and I want to spend more time with it to really you know, see how far I can push it. I'm even working in DaVinci Resolve to figure out whether it performs better in DaVinci versus Final Cut. Subscribe for updates. If you got any value out of this video, you know, hit the like while staying awesome. Stay awesome.